it feels like a really good day when I get to share a room reveal with you and officially just check off another finished space in our pole barn home that we have built ourselves from the ground up. So today, let me take you into our completed primary bedroom and share all the design details. So we have lived in this bedroom for three years with only unfinished sheetrock for walls, zero trim, and just leftover uncoordinating furniture from our old home. We just made the choice to finish our kids' rooms first and make them more comfortable. So needless to say, we have been very excited and anxious to begin work on our bedroom. When I envisioned this space, my hope was to create a very soothing room that felt both masculine and feminine. I just craved a space that would feel restful and not too busy. So with that goal in mind, more neutral colors and organic textures seem to just make their way into this room almost effortlessly. Now this room is filled with DIY projects and antique finds, and I feel it works well with the European farmhouse style that I'm really trying to create throughout our entire home. Of course, the bed is the rightful focal point. If you've been following along, you know that we actually made this upholstered and linen slip covered bed and I provided the building plans for you. So I will link again to this um, resource and all resources you can find in the description below or in my blog post for the space. So the bedding is abundant in shades of soothing whites and browns and just layered with oodles of texture. I shared another video all about every single layer and how we made this bed so it's like adaptable for all seasons really easily. To me, a comfortable and beautiful bed has layers and layers of linen fabric. So the sheets, the quilts, the duvet, and mini pillow covers are linen fabric. I actually discovered a wonderful source for more affordable linen bedding from a shop called Quince that I'm really excited about. Their linen feels extremely soft and luxurious. Linen bedding can be pricey. And when I toyed with the idea um, of making my own to save some money, I actually found the linen bedding from Quince to be cheaper than if I were to buy the fabric and make it all myself. So I went with that route. I've tried a lot of brands of linen bedding and they are all wonderful, honestly. As long as you get 100% linen, you really can't go wrong. But I was excited to share this source with you in case that you've hoped for linen bedding, but the cost has scared you away. I suggest just sell some stuff on Marketplace and save up for linen bedding. It is really worth every single penny. All right, I've added more linen fabric to frame our bed with these simple linen curtains made out of a very light weave linen. I actually did a reel on Instagram showing how simple it is to just tear and hang these no-sew curtains. I've draped them and to add some kind of curve to this view and I think it is just a very sweet and delicate little detail. Now our nightstands were both antique store finds we may replace the tops with marble remnants someday if I find some, but for now, they work great to add more storage and decor and a bit of that vintage feel that I love. All right, let's talk about the wall paint and trim for a minute. Now, I really wanted to bring in the old world texture that is achieved so well with pure and original paints, which you've heard me talk about. Now, the lower section of the walls is painted in their fresco lime wash color or paint in the color coffee cream. I left the upper section of the walls in the Chantilly Lace color by Benjamin Moore that's in most of our house on the ceiling. So we added some nice chunky trim to the baseboards and windows and a very slim, simple piece of trim about three-fourths of the way up the wall. In all honesty, I wanted a lot more detailed trim work in here, perhaps like some picture frame molding or some super chunky crown molding. However, with the cost of wood right now, I just couldn't spend like the thousands on trim that it would take to create that vision. So we opted right now to just keep it more simple and went with a more of a dramatic type of paint. And we can always add trim later on, perhaps if the price of wood goes down and it becomes a priority in our lives. But for right now, I love it. I've added some vintage art to the walls, but not too much because I didn't want it to be too busy in here. Um, a simple etching piece is above our bed. Some smaller framed art 
is beside our bed and above this cool little um, hanger that I got. And I've hung a lovely antique mirror across from the windows to bounce more light around the room. Now my frames are from thrift stores and the art is just from digital online shops for a few bucks each. It's a really affordable way to get vintage art into your home. Now I hung a vintage accordion wall hook piece to this wall, like I mentioned, to kind of catch our clothes that we may not want to hang up right away. And I love how it looks. So this beautiful dresser was another antique store find. It is very useful for some added storage and it's just so pretty to decorate. <laughs> this bench in front of our bed was something we made years ago from scrap wood, scrap wood and it's just really nice to have that at the end of the bed to sit on and I think it looks really nice. All right, I wanted to leave a lot of empty floor space at the foot of the bed because this is where I often do my yoga or some working out. So we've left that kind of open. Now this plush wool rug, if you might have noticed, is so full of texture and it's so nice to step on. I wanted something light in color but full of texture and this fits the bill. It does shed, but all wool rugs do in my experience for some time as you get them new, but it will slow down. Now one of my favorite features in this room is this gorgeous light fixture. I call it a chandelier ball, but I just adore the unique shape and the simple elegance. Now I don't believe I've shared a look at our closet yet, so let's check that out right now. Now I've been holding on to these antique doors that I snagged from a vintage market long ago. I fell head over heels in love with them. They frame this closet so perfectly. So in the closet, we custom built our closet by using unfinished dresser pieces from Amazon and just building around them and topping them off with a marble remnant that we got and cut ourselves. It worked really great to create kind of a custom closet look. And the hubs also built these cabinet spaces where we can fill with our baskets of clothes and shoes storage. Um, we have some hanging space, of course. We have open shelves that we made with marble and brackets and the closet goes up very high since we have 12 foot ceilings. So we just store extra sheets and totes and bedding and seasonal clothes. Um, Christmas presents go up there. It's just really great space. Now I keep this very light ladder behind our door for the rare times that we need to reach up and get one of those totes. So that is quite handy. Now on the other side of the bed is our master bathroom, which we luckily finished a long time ago and I shared on my channel and blog. It became a higher priority when we were tired of sharing one bathroom with six people. So we finished that quickly. We added a pocket door here because I felt like a swinging door would be too intrusive on either side. And to spruce up the cheap sliding door, I added some kill and stick wallpaper. I'm actually not sure if I love the pattern for this space, but I do think it is super beautiful and fun to see just a pop of pattern peek out on this door. I think that is about it. I hope you enjoyed seeing our European farmhouse bedroom. Be sure to check out my blog post for this space. Since photography is really my joy and passion, I had a lot of fun getting pictures of this room. So much of my design is done with the mindfulness of what it will look like in a photograph. So check that out. And there are some spaces though that I think just feel better in person and a photo or video can't quite capture the feeling. This is one of those spaces, but I'm beyond grateful to have finished it and to have a relaxing space to rest our weary heads. It feels so good. Now let me know what you think and if you have any questions for me in the comments below. I love to chat with you and hear from you so much. You have no idea. So thank you a ton for being here, for watching my video and for supporting my work to inspire the keeper of the home. Now, I will be back very soon to share more. Until then, have a lovely day and be sure you are subscribed so that I can share more with you. Take care.